What's up YouTube? I'm Robert and this is the Biker Channel, B1. Today, I'm finishing up 300,000 feet of climbing. At the beginning of the COVID epidemic, I decided that I needed to make a change in how I was living my life. I started doing the 80 pound vlog series where I'm documenting losing 80 pounds. This is the first day. The first day that I actually like came out here and freaking got the, got the weight bench on. <laughs> a few years before that decision, I was mostly a weekend rider with an occasional midweek ride. As you can see here, I was logging about seven to 900 miles in a year and around 50 to 80,000 feet of climbing. I remember thinking this was a lot and I didn't really have time to do more. However, in 2020, I found out I did. I logged almost 3,000 miles and 207,000 feet of climbing. A lot of those miles were road miles and since Sacramento is pretty flat, I wasn't getting much elevation just riding from my house. So in 2021, I decided I really wanted to up my mountain biking game. I went into the year without a clear goal, but I knew I just wanted to trade some of those road rides for days on the dirt. Between Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the new year, I always get lazy. And this year, it was no different. A few weeks into December, I was chatting with Heather Munvee on the Biker Bar, and I mentioned I was currently at 284,000 feet of climbing for the year, and I was considering making a push to hit 300. At that point, I had 11 days and 16,000 feet to ride. With nothing but rain in the forecast and the Christmas holiday coming up, the idea seemed impossible. I looked at my Strava the other day, yesterday, I think I posted on Instagram, and I'm at 284,000 feet of climbing this year. Oh, wow. So I was like, if I got 16,000 feet before the end of the year, I'd hit 300,000. 300, yeah. So Can I you think, do it? <laughs> I think I'm going to try. So basically starting tomorrow, I have, what, 11 days Dang, to try to get 16,000 You're saying feet. it to me and everybody. I, I can't wait yeah. to see it at the end of the year. Although the last 16,000 feet is important, the 284K before that was pretty important as well. Let's look back on some of the memorable rides from the year. To start off, I embarked on a trail build that had me log in a lot of elevation to get to where we were building. This was really fun and ended up changing what I do in the winter dramatically. Filming with the Colorado Kid on his Trailhead Troopers video was a blast. And if you haven't seen it, check out the link and show more. Hilarious. All right, and I would call that a very, very successful day out in Auburn. Things were controlled, people got handled, and baby, baby, we captured the bike some. We did capture the bike some. We got him. <laughs> You're an idiot. You him. slowed down but, so much I'm, in those turns. Yeah. That guy, we were on him the whole time. You lost but, him on the climbs. Yeah. And... Yeah, I know. But... What are you doing, Kenny? Wait, uh, just getting ready for the inspection. Wait, who are we gonna inspect, who's, Kenny? Who's watching bike oh, stuff? Oh. He's gone, you dummy! No. God dang it! God damn it! He's oh, so concerned about the hat, the gloves, oh. his donuts, oh. then he lets the guy go. Oh. Jesus. Ah. Because of COVID, the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival was canceled. But my friends and I, we all decided to keep our flights and go anyways. I ended up cleaning High Line, which was the standout part of that trip for me. Going yeah. through. I get through, uh, all in one. Woo! There were also a handful of videos on Patreon of me trying to figure out how to use the GoPro Hero 9 and some rides that weren't on YouTube either. You guys are going too fast? <laughs> if you'd like some extra content and to help support the channel, do me a favor and click the Patreon link at the end of the video or the one down to show more. It'll be much appreciated. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I sure did. My first trip to Exchequer was a ton of fun. That place has some badass downhill runs that will keep your stoke level high. Ugh. However, you do have to earn your turns, but all the elevation I was putting in really paid off. I did over 4K in climbing that day, and it was the first time that I made Aaron run to be an adventures tap out. I'm really impressed <laughs> with your climbing ability. Yeah. When we first started riding together, you were like, I'm out after a few uh, climbs. Yeah. Now you're pushing me up the hill. Yeah. That's freaking amazing. 
By April, Georgetown was running, and as usual, it doesn't disappoint. If you want to book a day with your buddies, it's worth every penny. If you have not come to see Tom back there, the guy who doesn't like to talk on camera, if you have not come to see Tom in top. Georgetown at California team. Expeditions, this guy right here, you're doing it wrong. Let me chase him just around a little bit. Look at this guy. Look, look how <laughs> handsome he is. Look how handsome he is. <laughs> the snow in Lake Tahoe was finally starting to melt, and I was climbing at elevation with an ease that I never had before. Oh, that back tire gives, and you're like, whew. <laughs> I recently met a fan from the channel and he showed me Angora Ridge. As well as one of my new favorite spots for post-ride beers and food. Around this time I finally got tired of trying to force myself to like the XL Chameleon. Somehow every few years I talk myself into trying an XL. Even though I know I like a large. However, I never learn my lesson. Yeah, have fun with it. Yeah. There is a plus though, because with the chameleon gone, I picked up a tall boy. And my new friend Brandon that showed me Angora, he laid down an amazing paint job on it. If you'd like to get a bike painted someday, make sure you check out his Instagram. Give him a follow. I end up riding an Armstrong Connector and Corral a few times. It was the first time I've ever done this ride pedaling instead of shoveling. And not only did I do it once, I did it twice in more than one ride. God, it's moments like these that you really start to question whether or not mountain biking is fun. <laughs> oh my God, this climb sucks the donkey balls. At this point, my confidence in my climbing ability was making me super stoked, and I was coming up with routes that I wouldn't have considered in the past. For instance, I wanted to ride Christmas Valley, and I ended up doing that, but I climbed to the top of toes just so I could get extra elevation. If you've been following the channel for a while, you might have saw whenever I tried to climb toads a few years ago. It was definitely an epic hike a bike and not something that I would voluntarily do to just turn around. By June, I had been riding so much that my skill set was dramatically changing. Things in Santa Cruz that I was extremely timid of somehow was something that I was looking forward to riding. All right. Dropping in again. Whew. Definitely gotta remember to get your eyes up here. It is like so steep. So, whoo! <laughs> I also had some new wheels built by Project 321 in Bend, Oregon. And I was finally able to keep up with my buddy Jake, who's always busted my ass about how much I've bitched about climbing in the past. We laid down some serious miles in a matter of a few days, and as usual, the riding and the beer in Bend is always something to look forward to coming back to. Damn, these are some fun ass berms. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Out here in the summer, we try to do as many high altitude rides as we can. So of course, Downeyville is always in the mix. This thing really picks up speed fast though. Holy shit, it does. And it's so light underneath you when you're kind of throwing it around. It's, it's nice in those aspects. I also rode hole in the ground for the first time in over 10 years. I totally forgot how much fun it was. I'm not gonna lie, the climb up there still sucks, but it sucked a lot less this time. BKXE and MTBing Adventures purchased Everstoke, and since I was up there helping build on the property, we had to get a ride in on Mills Peak. This ride really surprised me, and even though it's shorter than Downeyville, I think I may go out on a limb and say I like it better. Jesus, this is chunky, chunky, chunky. The trail is super active and easy to self-shuttle. It really doesn't disappoint. If you haven't gone, you should. I 
Around that time, I rode Mount Huff, and things were about to really change. The wildfires in California really took off at an alarming rate. And before I knew it, a lot of the trails that I love riding and mentioned earlier ended up being completely burnt to the ground. Mount Huff being one of them. Sly Park, Christmas Valley, Toad's Wild Ride, Armstrong Connector, Corral, they all burned this season. If you're a Northern California rider and you aren't donating time or money to the trail advocacy groups, now is the time. They've been working hard to get these trails and many more back in working order, and there's so much more work to be done once the snow melts. And the one place I have to say that absolutely knocked my socks off this year was Pinecrest. It was just epic, and I can't wait to get back there. Every year, I have a ride that I spend all winter thinking about, and without a doubt, this was the one. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the fire season, this about wrapped up any of the high altitude riding you could do because the air quality was extremely unhealthy. Fortunately, despite COVID's best attempts, Sea Otter ended up happening this year. And it was so much fun to go out and talk to all the vendors and see all the new products. It was really nice to feel some normalcy coming back to life. And that canceled Sedona Mountain Bike Festival? That was rescheduled. And next thing you know, I was down in Sedona, riding my favorite trails and tackling some new ones I had previously been too scared to even try. <sighs> this year I also started the Biker Shorts series where I do 90 second reviews on products. Short and sweet. Like when your buddy asks you on the trail if you like those pads, you don't talk about it for 15 minutes. It's, I like this, I hate that, I'd buy it again, or I wish I didn't waste my money. If you'd like to see something like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, a lot of my subscribers have been saying that they haven't been getting notifications for my videos. So if you wanna make sure that you are, click the bell right next to subscribe. If you're digging this, click the thumbs up. It makes me smile and, well, it helps keep the motivation up to make content. After all this, I found myself in Rockville with a couple of patrons and some buddies. And guess what, that 300K that I was chasing after, I did it. It truly made me reflect on a year that completely changed my riding skill set and showed me that the only thing that's ever holding me back from doing amazing things is that voice inside of my head saying I don't have time or I'm not strong enough or some other bullshit that ultimately just isn't true. So as we find ourselves setting up for the new year, let's not listen to that voice. Well, there you have it. Another successful ride, another successful year. Thanks to all of you guys for being part of it. I really appreciate it. But remember one thing, it only takes a bike to be a biker. Get out and be one.